Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you everything, or the basics about Jetpack Compose Navigation. So we will implement a very simple two-screen app here. On the one hand we have a text field in which we can enter our name. And when we then click on uh, to detail screen, we can see uh, that we successfully pass an argument to that second screen. And yeah, that is what you're going to learn. That is something that you will need in pretty much every project. So, very important. So carefully listen and watch this till the end. I am using this dependency here. Make sure to include the same in your build.gradle app file. You will find this in uh, this video's description. And I'm using the Compose Beta 09 version and this corresponding Kotlin Gradle plugin version, which is important to know. Other than that, let's jump right into it. So how does navigation in Jetpack Compose work? It's, it's very simple. If you're familiar with navigation components in uh, Android with XML, then this will be even easier for you. If not, don't worry. We'll basically have a nav host, which hosts kind of our navigation. So in the end, each screen here of our app will be its own composable. And the, the job of our nav host is just to take these composables and replace these when, when we want that. So all that basically happens under the hood here is when, when we click on this button, we say, okay, dear nav host, please navigate us to the detail screen and don't forget to, to pass this argument that we enter here in this text field. That is really everything about it. Um, there is a little bit more to navigation like deep links and stuff. I won't cover this here but the basics are super simple. First of all, we want to create this, this nav host I talked about. Let's create another Kotlin file for that, which I will call navigation. And in this file, we will then have our composable navigation. And we want to, to control the nav, nav host somehow. So what we need is called a nav controller. Well, nav controller, and we can get that by remember nav controller. So with this nav controller instance, we can then just navigate whenever we want. We can use it to pass arguments and stuff like that. Below that, I will then use this nav host composable here. That wants the nav controller from us. So it needs it needs to know, it needs to listen to these changes and commands from that nav controller. So we pass that here. We don't want to specify a navigation graph. Instead, we want to specify the start destination. And if you come from XML, a navigation component, then uh, this is different. So here in Compose, we don't specify this navigation graph. Um, I think we can, but we don't have to, and we usually don't do that. So we don't have an XML file where we specify that and the transitions between uh, each fragment, or in this case, each composable. Instead, we specify routes which are basically just strings. So this works really similar to actually a browser and URL. So, so you can visit a very specific website using a URL. You can pass arguments using query parameters. And this Compose Navigation works re really similar. So we can pass a start destination, which is a string, and that just says, okay, that is the first screen that shows up. So we could just hard code a route here, whatever we want to call it, main screen maybe, um, but what I want to do is I want to structure this a little bit better and I want to create a separate class for that. So in our root package, I create a new Kotlin class that will be a sealed class called screen. So in this sealed class, we can specify our single screens we have in our app. If you don't know what a sealed class is, it's, it's basically just a class um, that only allows classes inside of this screen class to inherit from screen or classes inside of this file. But if we would create a class, let's say, in our navigation file, and that, that couldn't inherit from screen. So this screen class will take a valid route, which is a string. So each screen, of course, needs this route that we define. And well, which screens do we have? These are just objects. They don't need any parameters. We want to have our main screen. Um, that now inherits from screen and takes in the route for that main screen, which is, let's say, main screen. We can duplicate that, control D, define our second screen, which is the detail screen, and swap this out with a detail screen. For now, this is enough here. 
later we will add some more functionality in the screen class but for now we can just use our screen that main screen that route here for the start destination so we want to start at our main screen and then we can add this lambda block and now in this lambda block we can define composables like this that um, we can just we can just tell our nav host now how our different screens look like. So this first wants to know the route. So route is equal to, well, we want to have our main screen first. So we say screen dot main screen dot route again. And we don't want to pass anything else for this screen. So here inside of this composable block, we now need to specify the composable that represents our main screen. So let's create that down here. Um, normally I wouldn't put this in this navigation file, but just for simplicity and for this tutorial, I will do that main screen here and this main screen needs an instance of our nav controller because it contains that that button with which we want to navigate to our our detail screen and to navigate we need our nav controller so in the end we just have a column here we set the vertical arrangement to center and we can apply a modifier um, the, the composed UI modifier of let's say filmx width and apply some horizontal padding of 50 dp. Import dp and in this column we will implement a normal material text field here. The value will be um, something we need to create a state for. So var text by remember import the remember word here and write mutable state of um, let's start with an empty string we need to fix this import here duplicate remember remember twice <laughs> um, to, and change it to set value and get value and then we can replace this with text the value and you can also see the errors again we want to remove the lambda block and instead implement on value change which gives us the the new string so whenever the value changes in that case we just want to update our text with a new string and let's put that into separate lines here and also implement a modifier modifier dot fill max width just fill the whole width of our parent column and then below that we want to have our button let's also add a little bit of space um, height let's say ATP and then we have our button with our onclick function in that onclick function when we click on that button we want to navigate um, but before we do that let's also add a modifier here modifier dot let's just align this button at the end of our column horizontally and that will be alignment dot end. We can format that a little bit and here in this button block we just want to specify the text that is placed on that button and say whatever to detail screen. That is it for the main screen apart from uh, this on click function. In this onclick function we want to navigate to the detail screen which we don't have yet so let's quickly create that which is a lot shorter we just have a text there um, detail screen and this detail screen takes an argument which is the name argument that we pass to it so when we navigate to it we need to pass the name make it nullable and in here just have a box to center the text um, the modifier will be modifier modifier dot fill max size and content alignment will be center uh, center like this will be yeah alignment center like this can we reformat that and put this on separate lines that looks better and implement our text here that just displays 
hello and the name. So hello name. That is it. So now we know the route to our main screen. We know the route to our detail screen. And when we now click this button here, we want to take our nav controller, call navigate, and here we want to pass a route. So one of these options here. And the route will be screen, detail screen, that route. And that will essentially make us navigate from main screen to our detail screen, because we say we navigate to this specific route. But this does not yet pass our parameter, our argument or navigation argument, uh, which is essentially just this text state here. How can we do that? For that, we need to define that we have this argument in the first place. And we do that here in our nav host. So below this composable, in which we can essentially just put our main screen, passing the nav controller, below this, we have another composable, the route will be this time our detail screen. And this time, as you can see, we have the option to pass a list of arguments. Let's do that. So arguments is list of nav arg. So for, for each argument we have, we would just add this to this list in form of this nav argument function. This wants us to give this argument a name, which is in this case, indeed just name because we want to pass the name and it gives us a builder block here and this builder block we can just give this argument some constraints for example the type which we can set to nav type dot string type because we want to be able to pass a string here the name is a string we could also pass the default value which we can set to Philip for example so that is how you can configure your arguments um, I would always specify the, the type. I think you even have to, not sure. Um, you don't have to give it a default value. I think you can also determine if it's nullable. Yes, we can say nullable is equal to true. We have it um, here, the, the nullable. So yeah, that is how we can do that. In this composable block, we can then specify that this represents our detail screen. And how do we now get this this name argument here for our detail screen. Well, that is where this navback stack entry here comes in handy. Let's um, give this a name of just entry. And we can then use that entry dot arguments to get access to our arguments, which are just a bundle dot get string it is because our name is a string. And here we specify the, the key, so how we call this argument, which is this here. So just name. So we now defined that we have this argument, but what we haven't done is we, ha we actually didn't pass it. So if we scroll down here, um, 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 here to our uh, button on click, we just say we want to navigate to our route, but we somehow need to, to, to tell our nav controller which argument we actually want to pass you to this route. And this is where this um, URL similar style of doing this comes into play. So essentially what we want to do is we want to scroll up again to our um, detail screen.route and we want to append this string here. So we basically have a slash, then we say um, curly bracket open and in that we just specify the name of our argument and curly bracket close. And then later we can just use our route, make a slash and just append our name. So uh, detail screen slash Philip, for example. And this would pass Philip as a navigation argument to that detail screen. And if you would have multiple arguments, you would just do the same here right afterwards. Um, you would, for example, have the H here as well. And then you would just pass these one after another separated by a slash. So this is how we can uh, define a mandatory argument. So then we have to pass the name if we do it like this. Um, and we, we can make any use of this nullability here and this default value. If you want an optional argument, 
then you instead do it like this. So that is very similar to create parameters of a URL. So you just say, okay, question mark, our name is equal to whatever we pass here. So in that case, if you don't pass anything for it, it will take this default value Philip um, or make it null if, if you don't have a default value. I will revert this here. I will make it a mandatory argument. This will crash in this case if we don't pass something for that, if we leave the text field empty. But yeah, it's, it's just for demonstration. You could also validate that, of course. And for that, I will also create a little help function here in our screen class to construct a route with arguments together. And again, this will only work for mandatory arguments. If you have, if you have these mixed up with optional arguments, this function won't work. Then you have to figure out your own function or just uh, manually concatenate uh, these strings all the time. So we'll have a function called with args where we can just pass a bunch of arguments of type string will be a var arc and this will also just return a string which is the the resulting route with these arguments together and here we can just return a build string block which is essentially just a string builder we want to always append the current route of the screen and then we want to take our arguments loop through these for each and just append slash and let's call it arg. So once you just append each argument to our route. And yeah, then we can go back to navigation. Scroll down to our on click here. And instead of calling screen detail screen on route, we call that with args. And here we can just pass our arguments we have just in the right order. The first argument is our name. So here we can just pass text, which is uh, the content of our text field. So we just pass whatever we enter there. Now what we shouldn't forget is to also call the navigation composable in our main activity. Otherwise we won't be able to see anything. But that is pretty much it. We can now run this. And I get a compile error here because I used the wrong Kotlin version. Um, if you use the same version as I do, then just go to your build.gradle project file, change this up to 1.5.10, synchronize this, and then simply relaunch the app afterwards. And it sticks to the top for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, let's not care about that for now. I think I just didn't center it vertically in the column. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's let's just um write uh, whatever Peter to detail screen and there it is. Hello Peter. And whatever we enter here, obviously it will take that as an argument and pass it to our detail screen. As I said, when we leave this empty, click here, then uh, the app will crash. Uh, this is the other app here. Um, but you can fix that if you just make this name an optional argument here, as I showed you. But in the end, that is it. Little recap, we just define our navigation composable. That contains our nav host with our nav controller. We define for each screen we have such a composable block with a corresponding route for that. For each route, we define uh, such an object here or a data class if you want to pass some arguments to that route. And yeah, if you have arguments, you define a list of nav arguments. You can get these arguments with this navigation entry you get here. And then you just define your screens and these will be replaced by our nav host. That is pretty much it. So thanks for watching this far. If you want to take your Android skills to the next level, check the first link in this description. It will lead you to my website and there you will find more advanced Android premium courses. So make sure to check these out. I wish you an excellent day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.